Hey guys, and welcome back to The Learning Droid. I'm sorry about my voice, I've had a bit of a cold for a couple of days. That's left me a little bit rough, but that's okay. Today we're going to be doing a uh, door hanger. It's a birch plywood store-bought door hanger. I think it cost me 79, 89p, something like that. It's just a thin little piece of birch plywood. As always with birch plywood, because there's glue in between the layers, we're going to have to be careful about how deep we burn and what we're breathing when we burn. Uh, it's going to be for a family member and it's just going to be a little um, friendly little reminder not to come in when she's busy. So guys, patterning first and it's going to be a multi-stage thing. Um, I'll do some sped up videos I think, seeing depends how fast we'll do. What I'll do is I'll do the patterning off screen and then you can come back once it's all patterned and we'll have a look at it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in a moment. Hey guys, welcome back. Patterning's all done and as usual we have all of our standard things. We've got our spare nibs, glass jar, screwdriver, brush, pliers, our fan that we're going to turn on to make sure that we don't have any problems. Once again guys, I'd love to apologise for my voice. <coughs> I've had a bit of a cold recently and it's kind of knocked me for six and left my voice a little bit ragged. So guys, birch plywood, which means that we're going to have a low temperature setting because we don't want to overburn. Um, I did not choose the wording for this particular piece. Uh, that was the choice of the person who it's for, which would be a family member of mine. And, um, yes, it's certainly an interesting choice of words. Fan on, just to make sure that I don't uh, breathe in any nasty smoke. This is a ball of wool with two knitting needles and a large crochet hook sticking out the top. The sizes are a little bit off, but uh, it's more cartoony than anything, so the sizes are not of ridiculously vital importance. Um, so guys, how's it going? <laughs> like you can answer. Um, no. Things have been a little bit... Uh, rough on my end. Still looking for a job, so if anyone knows of any jobs going. <laughs> yes, I've been averaging probably about 10, but on the safe side, let's say 7 applications a week. And I've been doing that since I started applying for jobs at the end of the Olympics, after I finished working as a security guard on the Olympics. Here in uh, the UK. And that was over six months ago now. So, if we do the math, I'm not exactly sure what it works out as, but I think it's something like 170 applications, 190 applications, something like that. And depressingly, I've heard back from maybe five, ten, asking me to come in for an interview. That's the way it is at the moment, guys. It's not unpleasant on that end of the job. Which, of course, means I'm still broke as broke can be. But... There are people far worse off than me. My family's here to help. I'm living with family members so they can look after me. Keep me fed, keep me sheltered. I'm in far better condition than many. So, cannot whinge. To 
to anyone who does not have family members to look after them. First off, how on earth are you watching this? <laughs> Secondly, guys, I wish you all the best of luck. I really do. It is not a pleasant situation to be in. Looking for a job and not being able to get one. Unfortunately, it is all too common nowadays. Especially for youngsters. Oh, yeah. This is a slightly splintery bit of balsa wood, or plywood, sorry. Birch ply. Pitch pie is very sensitive. Anyway, guys, um, I suppose this has turned into a slight sort of vlog, really, hasn't it? But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Yes. One of the really irritating things is that nowadays, um, in the past, people used to accept CVs. It used to be the general way of applying for a job. You'd send a CV. But nowadays, I'd say probably 8 out of every 10 jobs says, we will not accept CVs. Do not bother sending CVs. No. I can understand why. It takes less time and it's far easier for the staff of the company if everyone who applies uses their application form. Because then everything is in the same position. Imagine if, say, if you're a computer gamer, if you played World of Warcraft, and all the information for all the weapons wasn't done in the standard way. In the standard way, it's attack, defense, etc 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 damage per second blah 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 and it's all laid out in a certain order so that you know where everything is meant to be but imagine it wasn't imagine the person who made the weapon got to pick what that looked like different people would have different opinions about what was important depending on what kind of person they were what they wanted it to look like. They each have their own opinion, their own way of doing it. And what you'd end up with is you'd end up with dozens of different designs for um, the layout of the information. And that's what it's like with CVs. So I can understand that it's far easier for the companies involved. And I can also hear people already saying, if you're too lazy to fill out an application form, then you don't deserve the job. Well, I'm not too lazy. I've filled out several hundred or almost 200 of the things. But it is a pet peeve to me to sit down one day and have to fill out my name, my address, my postcode, my phone number, my work experience, my education, my references, my preferences, who I am, what I am, where I am, when, how, which, why, and have to do that ten times in a row. It would be brilliant if you could have a program that filled it in all automatically. I know, I know there are programs that do fill in forms automatically for you. The problem is each company's website, each application form, is designed differently. So it's the opposite of the CV problem. Each company and each sort of group has their own way of designing the application form. 
So I can't have a pre-designed program fill it out for me because it wouldn't be able to keep up with these differences. So I manually fill it out. Now I can understand it from the side of the company. Companies nowadays are not rich, they are not wealthy, they are not well off. Some people would argue differently but the fact of the matter is companies are not making as much money nowadays as they were a couple of years ago, four years ago, five years ago. So for them, my time, because I'm not employed by them, is essentially free. So if it takes me however long it takes me, depending on the application form, depending on how it's set out, it might be anything from sort of 5 to 25 to 30 to 60 minutes. 60 minutes being the really poorly set out ones. Um, to fill out their application form. But for the company that's got the application form up, it's not cost them anything. My time is free. Because I want a job, so I will sit there and fill out the application forms, usually online, and with me, usually at one in the morning. And I'll fill the application forms out and send them off. And the company doesn't have to pay me for doing that. Which is great for them, because they're getting because if I sent in a CV it would be the other way around they would have to have someone in the office reading all the CVs and because the CVs weren't laid out exactly the same it would take that person longer and they would have to pay that person more money for reviewing the same number of applications as that person wouldn't instantaneously be able to find comparison information between two CVs so for the company it's cheaper and better to have this pre-designed application form.